Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, Mansion returning to the Bellator cage coming up on June the 17th. Bellator 156 as he is going to be returning to the middleweight division after a run there in the Bellator welterweight division. It is Chris Honeycutt. Chris, as always, appreciate the time. Uh, I guess uh, when when this was announced, I started kind of asking around. And, and my understanding is this is a, a permanent move and that your days at 170 are over? Oh, I don't know where you heard that from. I don't know. I, uh, I, I do not, I do not want to, I want to say that it's false that this is a permanent move. It possibly could be. We'll see how my, uh, you know, my camp's going tremendous. Uh, you know, I'm healthier and, and better than ever. Um, you know, but it's got to translate well in the ring too. Uh, you know, you can feel the, the best in the world, but if it doesn't translate into the fight, then, uh, then I, I can't see it being a permanent move. I, uh, I'm always willing to drop back down to welterweight to fight anyone. I, I just want to stay active. Um, I, I, I enjoy fighting. I train hard, so I'll fight anyone really. But was that just the simple reason of hey, you know, a fight got offered me? It was offered at 185. It was, and uh, at the end of the day, I, I only get paid when I'm fighting. Um. Well, getting paid is always, always a plus. Um, you know, that's why I'm uh, full-time fighters, because to get paid, I mean, I, I have no other income other than fighting. So, um, that's yeah, that, that's, always, that's always big. Um, I actually I could have fought Walter Waite. I think if I wanted, I think there was a opponent that we, uh, I think Bellator was looking at for me or however it works. I just, they just asked me, and I say yes. Um, I was talking to my managers and they think that it, it, it's good to go up to a middleweight and, uh, you know, test the waters out and see what it is. I mean, it's not my first time fighting in the weight class. I'm, I know how big, big those guys can get. And, um, I know how big I am and I'm definitely not going to be a small well or a middleweight. I'm a huge welterweight, but I'm definitely not a small welterweight by any means. I, uh, you know, my, my body's able to be at its, natural size all the time now and i actually get to get a little try to get a little bigger in between fights so if i could you know if it translates well i have no problem making middleweight my permanent home but at the same time if someone wants to fight at welterweight i am always ready to go in terms of and obviously there, there's a lot of things happening on the regulatory side of the sport in terms of weight cutting we, we're seeing what the california uh commission has done you you were you know fought uh, at mohegan where you know they're kind of altering their their way in regulations as well uh is there a part of you that may be sitting there going man you know with, with how things are kind of changing in terms of uh weight cutting in mma do you almost start to kind of think about the fact of you know what maybe cutting the 170 isn't what's best for me Well, all these, reg- I, I mean, they have all these new regulations. I mean, I don't read about them. I, don't, I, I usually am into that kind of stuff as far as when stuff, like, especially if it pertains to my, my business or my job. Uh, but I haven't, they are, from what I hear, California and Mohegan, well, even just nationwide, they're, they're having these regulations on fighting, and, and, and it is a concern of mine. And I talked to my managers about it a little bit when we were discussing on going up a weight or not. And, um, and I, it, I, if you don't, if they don't, which I don't know exactly what the regulations are, so I can't really use this example, think of an example, but if, if I make the weight and they, for some odd reason, say that, for whatever the regulations are, like I said, I have no idea. Say I can't fight even though I made the weight, I'm healthy, I'm there, then I don't get to fight. If I don't fight, then I don't get paid. And I do cut quite a bit of weight. And and to be able to go through a whole fight camp and then, you know, make those small sacrifices every day, and then, you know, I'm ready to go and I'm, you know, ready to fight and I make the weight and they tell me that I can't fight, not only do I not get fight, I don't get paid. And if I don't get paid, then it's like, I, I mean, that it's my job. It's my livelihood. So if they're not letting me fight, then how do I pay my mortgage? How do I pay my car payment and, you know, my electrical bills? So I, I feel like going up to middleweight is kind of, 
kind of figure out, well, what's really going on? I mean, the last thing I want to do is train for a fight and then not be able to fight, especially if, I mean, if it's at home, I guess it wouldn't even be as bad because I'm already home, but I wouldn't want to travel across the country just to, you know, not to realize I'm, I don't have a paycheck coming. I don't have a paycheck coming in and I, I don't get to do what I love. So there is a little bit of fear in there that, you know, third parties are preventing that potentially could pre- uh, prevent me from working. Um, so I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's one of those, I don't know. That's one of those things where you just kind of see what, see how it plays out. I mean, at Mohegan Sun, they seemed to be pretty strict. I believe they pulled two fights due to weight, and they didn't pull me. And they, and, and that was – so I, I don't think it's a huge issue, but I uh, do have concerns about it. Um, but I definitely feel safe going at welterweight at the Mohegan only because those new implema- – those, those new rules have already been set there. So – if I'm fine there, I should be fine everywhere else, I would like to believe. But at the same time, I can't afford to, you know, sacrifice a whole training camp just for someone and then to make weight just for someone to say that I'm not able to fight when clearly I'm able to fight. I'm eight, I'm, I'm, I'm seven and one, I'm seven and one as a welterweight. So, um, you know, I, I there's really no, nothing else I can, I can even just repeat that over and over again. It just, baffles me how a third party can be so I don't know I mean I want to just go off and kind of tangent about how I wrong I think it is that I mean it's a good I mean they got good meanings behind it but at the end of the day if you make the weight and you're healthy you should be able to fight regardless of whatever new rules or sanctions that they have I don't know have you have you thought about you know maybe trying to have a conversation with with the people who who want to change uh, the way weigh ins are, are done in MMA and, and maybe just let them hear your side of the story and and why you feel like hey things shouldn't be changed? Well, if they call me and ask me, I'll tell them my opinion. I, I I I'm in the gym all day. The last thing I don't have any energy. I uh, I I wake up in the morning. I work out and I'm dead to the world. I come home. I nap. I eat. I try to prepare myself as best as I can for my afternoon workout. And, uh, you know, and especially if I'm in a camp, I'm focused on one thing only, and that's becoming the best fighter. And at the, you know, I, I've always had intentions of going up to middleweight at some point in my career. I was, I was, I was wanting to win the belt and defend it a couple times and make my name in the welterweight division before making the jump to middleweight. And then obviously doing the same thing so I could, you know, be a champ at two weights or have been the champ at two weights, um, you know. But like I said, this isn't this doesn't necessarily mean I'm a permanent middleweight. Um, but, you know, what a what a uh, statement it's going to be fighting uh, Mikel Parlo, a 13-2 fighter, uh, kicker, striker. Um, once I, you know, get a technical knockout win against him, people are going to know that, you know, I, I can hang with both divisions. Call, calling your shot there a little bit. I mean, Mikel, I mean, obviously Bellator fans are very aware of, of Mikel. He, he went through the tournament process. Uh, he's coming off a win outside of, you know, when, when you sit back there and, and you start thinking about what Mikel does well, I mean, do you just merely say, hey, this guy, he's going to want to sit there and stand and bang with me for 15 minutes. Is that the way you view him or do you view him a different yeah. way? Well, I watched a couple of his fights. It seems from like what I've been hearing, I've, the fights I've watched were, a little, a little older, older fights, and he's not too bad. Ba- I don't know how his offensive takedowns are and all that stuff. I don't think I would imagine that they will probably aren't that well because or, or that good because that's not his preference. His preference is to stand and, you know, and uh, punch uh, and kick. I would consider him as more of a kickboxer than just a boxer because he does kick some and he's pretty good at it. But uh, his uh, defense is actually not too, too bad from the people that shot from the outside. So he does have a nat or, or a, he does have a good sense of idea of when to drop to a, the double underhooks. Um, now I don't do that. I don't shoot from the way in the open, like, a like some of the fighters that I saw on the, on the videos that he fought before. 
Uh, I'm a much more explosive, especially now that I'm a middleweight. I'm going to be very, very explosive. I'm with the weights again. And, um, you know, he does that to me. He's going to get, I mean, he's going to go right over my head up in the air. So, um, I, uh, yeah, I think that he just wants to stand and, and throw punches for 15 minutes if he had it his way. But it's, you know, I'm the wrestler, and everyone knows wrestlers dictate where fights go, and I choose to be on top of him. Obviously, you have had multiple fights now in Bellator. For for fans who maybe are on the, the fence of whether they're going to sit there and watch this fight, why would you tell them to make sure, you know what, on June 17th, you got to turn on Spike TV at 9 o'clock to see you fight? Oh, yeah, no, people should definitely be on Spike TV um, watching the fight. I, I, I mean, you're looking at a 13-2 and two, uh, fighter from Copenhagen, Denmark. I mean, he's a legitimate threat to any fight. I mean, he's a good striker and everything. Uh, and then you have me. I'm a national finalist, two-time All-American, and I'm coming up a weight, and I'm going to be more, more explosive than I've ever been uh, at welterweight just for the sole fact that I'm able to uh, I'm able to go into the fight having more explosiveness and strength than I've ever had in any of my other fights. And, uh, you know, now that I'm, you know, healthy and ready to go, and uh, he, I, mean, he, I, I can't see how he's going to be able to keep two of his feet on the canvas without his head hitting the canvas first. I, I, I just, I can't see how he's going to prevent me from not, you know, blast doubling him into the cage. And, uh, you know, my ground game is by far superior than my striking, even though my striking is very well, or has gotten very good in the last year or so. Um, I just, I just don't, I don't see how he, especially in this camp he's had, I can't see how he, uh, can grow that much as of, uh, of a defensive fighter from re- against a wrestler that quickly. It takes people years, and, and even then, it is, it still doesn't work. And in MMA, it's not like you get – or like wrestling. Wrestling, you can go out of bounds, and you start – you go back to the middle and start over. MMA, you you know, I take you down, I stick you against the cage. Now the cage is also helping me keep you on the ground. You just, it just – it's not – it's not a win-win for him. It's, uh, it only works in my favor. And if when I'm on top, big shot, because he's not a huge, he's not a black belt or anything like that, like my last fighter or the, my last fight. So big shots will be thrown because I won't have to worry about the knee bars, the ankle locks, the heel hooks and, and all that from a, you know, a black belt that's known for doing it. And this will be a part of Bellator 156 coming up on June the 17th from the Save Mart Center in Fresno, California. Chris, as always, appreciate time. Good luck in the fight, man. Yes, thank you so much.